Never Changing World. Life Changes Network presents a show about everything. This is Life Changes with Filippo with unforgettable, ever insightful conversations that captivate our fascination and insatiability for the inspiring moments of real life journeys. This is a conversation that matters as we as one strive for higher planes of existence and a better understanding of our true selves and the world in which we live. Always remembering, life changes. This is radio like you've never felt before, and tonight have we a surprise for you. And now your host, our MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. <laughs> I like that. And tonight have we a surprise for you. Uh, well, you left the surprise for me to say, and that is our guest is Dr. Kirby Surprise, uh, who's written a book, Synchronicity, The Art of Coincidence, Choice, and Unlocking Your Mind. And you know, I have actually perused the book, and last night I sat down to peruse it even more and to read uh, chapters that were standing out as need to read right away because um, at times I haven't been wanting to put it down even though I've had to to do other things because it's just like yes that happens or yes that just happened and while I was reading it I get a call from a person that you all may know, Mark Skelton, who was actually a producer with us here on Life Changes with Filippo a few years back. And interestingly enough, while I'm reading Dr. Kirby's book, uh, uh, Kirby Surprise's book, Synchronicity, Mark calls me to tell me that he's working on getting Dan Millman on the show for us on Life Changes with Filippo. And I, I was excited about that, and I asked him how that came to be, and and he told me that uh, what I actually asked him was how it came to be that he thought about getting Dan Millman on the show and how he came to know him. But he took that to mean how did his connection with Dan Millman come to be, which is nothing but one synchronistic experience and event after another. And I thought, how appropriate. As Mark told me this story, I was taking notes and I asked him if I could share. And he said, of course. And so he's probably listening as well as all his friends and all of our friends and all of you, of course. And this is the story because it's quite interesting and I'll be quick. But Mark is a producer who came from England. Ironically, not coincidentally, I haven't spoken about Mark in so long. And today we have in the studio Lee Waterworth, who's going to be our co-producer tonight during the producer's wrap. And them two uh, came from England together and they started working on a movie called Peace Pilgrim. And, and how did this all came to be? Well, well, Mark told me that his sister bought him a book called The Life You Were Born to Live, which, of course, was written by Dean Mil Dan Millman. She bought him this book in London. That's London, England. And in London, England, in 2003, his sister, on his birthday, bought him this book. Mark read the book cover to cover. And he was just fascinated by it. And in the book was the first time he had ever heard of Peace Pilgrim. And he thought, what a fascinating lady. Someone should make a movie about her. And then not thought about it again. And he all of a sudden had this vision that he was in L.A., that he was receiving some award for having produced this film talking to people of, of the Peace Pilgrim Society. Um, and, and he thought it was the strangest vision that he had had, considering the fact that he was in London and had way too much going on to even consider going to L.A. Well, long story short, um, this book is one of 10 books that he brought with him to the United States when he came from London. He only brought 10 books of the hundreds that he had, and one of them was The Life You Were Born to Live. Well, soon after, he was uh, living in Los Angeles, and um, he started meditating. And during a meditation, he saw the Dan Millman book, as I recall the story as he shared it, and he saw this, this lady in it, Peace Pilgrim. He couldn't even remember his na her name. And, and he, 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 in the meditation, it was just so clear that he was so connected to this. And, and what he did was he came out of the meditation, went to look for the book. And of course, the book's like 400 and something pages. But he said to himself, 
I have to find this page. And uh, I don't even remember the lady's name. Was she the walker? What was she? And then he said he remembered that uh, in studying The Course in Miracles, no matter what page you turn to in a book, that's the page where the message for you is. Um, and, of course, that aligns with what Dr. Kirby Surprise is saying, How uh, and he'll tell us more about what all that means in just a little bit. But wouldn't you know it, the page he opens to is the exact page in which there is only one chapter on, or, or one paragraph on Peace Pilgrim. And he decided at that point that that was a sign that he was to write this script and make this movie. And he was up all night and at nine o'clock in the morning, he decided that he was going to connect with the people of Peace Pilgrim um, and eventually did. And they gave him, after 28 years of people wanting the rights to this, to this story and to the making of the film, they have not given it to anybody. They gave him the rights to make this Peace Pilgrim movie. Um, and, and so to close off this story, how does Dan Millman come to be that we're going to have him on the show? Well, Mark um, had a, a girlfriend visit uh, from London on her way to Australia. She started reading his book, his copy of The Life You Were Born to Live. And as um, she started getting ready to go to Australia, he decided to give this book to her as his gift. Well, she took this book with her to Australia. A month later, she runs into Dan Millman and tells him that he inspired Mark Skelton to start working on producing a film of Peace Pilgrim. Dan Millman was so touched by this that he autographed the book to her for Mark and she sent the book back with his personal email and they've connected and been email friends ever since. And so that is a, 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 I couldn't, it's a, a perfect example of synchronicity. And as uh, Dr. Kirby Surprise would say, the art of coincidence. Or, or is it coincidence? Is it perhaps choice or unlocking our minds? We're going to find out from Dr. Kirby Surprise right after this. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. An ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Our guest today is Dr. Kirby Surprise, who's written a book called Synchronicity, The Art of Coincidence, Choice, and Unlocking Your Mind. He is a psychologist with the state of California. He speaks on this subject. He has clients that, that he helps with. He does groups, all kinds of things on this very subject, which he has scientific basis and medical physical basis, and all kinds of basis for us understanding what synchronicity really is. So we are so happy uh, to have Dr. Kirby Surprise on the show. Welcome, Kirby. Thanks for having me on. Uh, this is exciting. So I told you earlier uh, about this story that I was going to share about Mark, that it happened while I was reading the book, and you said that's, excuse the pun, no surprise, because it happens when people read your book. Tell me more about that. Um, well, the, the, running the running joke about, about this book is it's the first, first book ever written, written that when you read it, your environment changes. changes. Mm. 
Um, um, synchronistic, synchronistic events, events are reflections, reflections of, of what you're thinking and what you're feeling. feeling. They, reflect they reflect all of your processes. processes. So, so what we see, see constantly in the environment is, is our own thoughts being reflected back at us. And the book is about teaching people a reasonable explanation on how that's possible and then, you know, how to work and play with it without getting caught in our own illusions. Well, you know, th- th- this story, for example, about our, our, our pro- former producer, Mark Skelton, I-, I-, I mean, his sister just gave him a book. I mean, he didn't know this book beforehand. And then, you know, he gave it to somebody else who then goes and meets the author. And now they become friends. And, and it doesn't seem like this is something that he had on his mind to have happened. But s- we would say, wow, what a coincidence. But you're saying there's more to it. Well, you know, we're all interconnected on many levels. Um, and in the same way that, you know, when you dream, you, you realize that your brain is producing the dreaming, but you don't, you're not aware of the internal process involved. You get the end product. And synchronicity is very much like that. The things that we're interested and concerned about show up in the environment more often. And we're actually the source uh, for, for this stuff happening. Um, synchronicity is kind of maddening to explain in some ways because it's also operating independent of linear causal time as we think of it you know it's a demonstration that we are sort of multi-dimensional and not strictly limited to cause and effect so um when you talk about uh, the story you just told if you think about it as the result of the things the author has been interested in being reproduced in the environment the odds changing in favor of the patterns he was thinking about then it kind of becomes understandable because events start to fall in place based on things that he and the people around him were interested in and focusing on. Hmm. Like, obviously, if the author mentioned Peace Pilgrim in the book, then it's something that he is, a, that he is interested in, and so that also created the, the effect to his cause. To some degree. The most common synchronistic events are best analyzed by looking at the individual and what it means to the individual person. Um, You know, I must confess that the universe is considerably more complex than I can fathom in many ways, and synchronicity can get quite complicated. Uh, But as far as individual people go, we, each one of us, constantly are altering the environment depending on what we're looking for, the patterns that we're focused on, the way we focus our attention. And if you sort of stay in the present moment and don't worry about how things are caused or linear causes to things, but look for meanings and reflections in the environment, you find synchronistic events show up very often. And, you know, and pretty soon, you know, if you pay close enough attention, you realize you're actually looking at your own patterns. Okay, so something that happens often is uh, somebody calls and you answer the phone and you say, I was just thinking about you, right? Yes. Uh, so if, if, if I say that to somebody, somehow I created that is what you're saying. Well, it's not as simple as that, unfortunately. Ah. Uh, it's, not, it's, <laughs> it's not as if you're altering the environment. Um, the, the model in the book that came up with the explanation for this is actually based on modern string theory. And, uh, you know, we found out in the late nineties when they solved the unified field equations that, You know, the old jokes people made about an infinite number of parallel universes weren't jokes. It's actually true. So it used to, you know, they used to make this joke in science fiction that Elvis is playing Vegas in a universe right next door. Well, that's actually now the standard model of physics. There's an infinite amount of probabilities all around us. What I'm saying is that instead of thinking of it as moving through doorways from one to the other, we actually exist on an infinite almost amount of these probabilities at the same time that you're experiencing them right now, and that your thoughts and your emotions steer you in probability just a little bit. One of the mistakes that sort of the New Age movement has always made is trying to say that we create our own reality. Mm. And, you know, as pleasant as that would be, the fact is we don't create it, but we do influence it. But we're influencing our personal position in all these infinite probabilities. We move to places that reflect our thoughts and emotions as do everyone else around us. This is sort of moving from, you know, a flat earth model to sort of a gravitational relative model. You know, it's, it's a new way of thinking about it. Because if you think about trying to cause these events, which obviously 
transcend physical energy and time and space. It just gets crazy making. But if you realize that what you're actually doing is choosing where you're going in probability, that it's not an infinite ability, but it's like a three to five percent ability, it then starts to make sense. And we're all doing this all the time. In fact, most of people's belief systems about the universe are actually based on their own thoughts being reflected back to them, which they then mistake for confirmations of the reality of what they're already thinking. Mm. Mm. Well, I, you know, I actually I, I saw a show one time when uh, a, a marketer uh, put advertising all around people and, and then he asked them what they were thinking or asked them to draw things. And, and without them realizing they were drawing what was on the walls or in their environment and what had been put there by others. So could some of what we are experiencing have been put there and is that by the by the universe by our higher power uh, you know our, our our previous self or you, you know what i'm getting at yeah um yeah there's some questions that are really hard to answer uh, the piece of it that i've been addressing is how much of this we personally create now believe it or not you're not actually experiencing reality right now what you're experiencing is a neurological representation that your brain builds You've got trillions of sensors on your body pointed out in the environment. And they're all di little digital computers, billions of them, excuse me. They transfer digital information to your brain, which is the universe's largest known supercomputer. It constructs the reality that you're living in right now in areas of memory. The part of you that think of as you, that executive function, is actually about the size of a walnut on the very frontal lobes of the brain. It doesn't have any direct contact with the senses. What you're experiencing is a creation that the brain has put together for you, and it deletes the vast majority of information in your environment. There's millions of more patterns out there than you could consciously deal with. So these automated systems in the brain, this brilliant computer in your head, filter out all the things that it thinks you're not interested in and highlights all the patterns that you've said that you're interested in by what you've paid attention to. So... Indeed, there are a huge amount of patterns in the environment left by us, left by all kinds of influences we probably couldn't trace. But the ones that we notice, the ones that have meaning for us, are usually based on the things that we've chosen to look for and pay attention to. So this would sort of be why one person can sit in an environment with a lot of things going on and get all kinds of spiritual messages and see connections. And another person who's just not oriented that way just sees people in traffic going by. It depends on your consciousness and the choices that you make. And I'm also saying that because you can choose some of the things you think and feel, you can quite easily and quite actively create synchronistic events by choice. Okay, so is that kind of like... Um uh, you, when you decide that you're going to buy yourself a red Mustang, uh, then until you actually get it, or even after you've gotten it, all you see on the, on the road are red Mustangs going, well, how, where did everybody get a red Mustang all of a sudden? Well, you know, there's, two, there's a two-parter to that. One is you've been thinking about red Mustangs, and now your brain is showing you all the ones that are already out there. Because if it's got no emotional relevance, you have no memory of it. And the other part is you actually change the environment by 3 to 5%. So there are a few more red Mustangs in your world if that's what you've been thinking about. Okay, so if if okay, so 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 say all of a sudden I decide I I, I want to be a dancer, which maybe that's not a good example because that's far from my line of thinking, so that can't really happen. But okay, so let's let's pick something that um, say we see, I, I see this show on television. So is that because um, this, this, this show was always on television or always supposed to be, but we started here. And then when we see it on television, we say, oh yeah, I, I look at all the synchronistic events that led us here. I, I, I am so confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Think of it this way. Okay, you are steering your course in the universe by what you think and feel, but the influence you have is about maybe 5%. Now, your brain custom designs the neurological experience 
the representation that you're living in right now. So there's a thing called emotional valence. Things do not get into your long-term memory if there's no emotional importance to them. So although the show could have been on, you could have seen commercials for it, if it previously had no importance for you, it never becomes part of your memory. It might as well never have happened. If something is important to you, does have some emotional charge for you, you do tend to remember it. Now, so part of synchronicity is your own brain's natural pattern matching ability, learning to use it to your advantage, to tell your unconscious the kind of things you're interested in seeing and waiting for it to show you the patterns that you've been missing. But you also do actually change the environment somewhat. Now, it's not you're bending time and space and everybody in it, but you're choosing where you are in probability. Now, most people have heard in astronomy we measure distance in time. We say light years because time and space are inseparable. And we understand that time is a good measure of distance. What I'm saying is we also travel in probability. And that our ability to do that is not vast. You know, we're, we're not sort of starships as creatures that can wind up in any possible probability we want. But we do have some innate natural ability to change the odds in our favors and to have the patterns we're looking for show up. So what I'm trying to do is give people a rational way to think about it and to realize they're already doing this. You're already shaping your world. The things that you're encountering are already partially based on what you're feeling and thinking. In particular, people who meditate or are spiritually oriented seem to have this ability a little more. You know, people who think it's possible, it becomes more possible for them. And and you're saying that's actually, um, or are you saying this is a good thing that when we start seeing the, the synchronistic events? Well, I'm saying that it's a mirror and that mirrors aren't good or bad. Um, there's been many books in the subject written from the perspective of, you know, let synchronicity be your guide and it's the universe or the cosmos trying to help you out. Um, I absolutely don't believe that. I believe that we ourselves are innately connected to the universe as one consciousness, but that what you're experiencing are things that your unconscious or other parts of yourself are already doing. So you're experiencing little sort of unitary Satori experiences when, when these happen. And that um, the meanings that are reflected back don't necessarily have to be true. They're just what you've been thinking about and the patterns that you've been looking for. I've had many, many clients who've been diagnosed as delusional because they looked, saw synchronistic events and then came up with an outlandish explanation because something had to be doing it. And then they see the explanation reflected back at them and take it as a confirmation. And they suddenly think that, you know, they're the Messiah or it's aliens or whatever mythology they come <laughs> up with. In fact, it's a very direct mirror. It mirrors back to you whatever you're looking for. And the advantage to this is sort of, you know, our ancestors were hunters. And if you could possibly make the thing you were hunting for show up 5% more of the time, that's actually a tremendous advantage. Mm. And that's what we're still doing. It's an automatic skill. It doesn't have to be trained. It, you know, it doesn't have to be learned. Everybody's constantly doing it already. I mean, you may have had clients on your show who seem perfectly, you know, fine people, but some of their views are sort of way over the top, and you wonder how can they believe such things. Well, usually it's because if you look for the pattern in the environment, synchronistic events, events that are purely based in meaning, will reflect those thoughts back to you. And some people mistake that for a confirmation of the reality of what they're already thinking. Wow. Wow. I, uh, Kirby, I have to tell you, I find this so fascinating. Um, and, and a little bit confusing, but I have a feeling that by the end of the show, it'll be a lot less confusing actually by the end of your book, when I finish reading your book, uh, which I look forward to doing, but, um, we're going to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, I'd like to talk about real time data curation and, and, and your thoughts on that. Um, and then how we use this to our benefit. Obviously, we're, we're, we're still, some of us are still hunting. So, um, how, how to make the deer come closer to us, uh, in, in whatever, whatever it is that we're hunting for. 
Um, although I understand that you're saying it's kind of like a mirror and that's an interesting way of, of using it as well. Um, if, for those of you who are interested in the book or who want to learn more about Dr. Kirby surprise, you can go to how synchronicity works.com how synchronicity works.com. And again, our guest is Dr. Kirby surprise. We'll be right back with him right after this. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jumpstart, an awakening, someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariela Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shymoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. Our guest is Dr. Kirby Surprise, who's written a book on synchronicity. As a matter of fact, it's called Synchronicity, the Art of Conscious of, of Coincidence, Choice, and Unlocking Your Mind. And you can learn more about him and our uh, and the book at howsynchronicityworks.com. Uh, uh, Dr. Kirby, before um, uh, we went to the break, you had said something about how the, the, the mind works and how it analyzes the data. And and um, we were talking with a, a, a producer here, Mark Lejeur, and and he was saying it sounds like real time data curation, how, how the brain is working. Do you, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, he's exactly right. He's exactly right. That's what the that's what your brain is designed to do. Our evolutionary niche is to match patterns, to store them, to associate them together, and to find out what's meaningful and what's important. Your brain is a miracle, okay? So you're taking in billions of bits of information every second and constructing the reality you're living in. And based on what is needed, what is important for your survival and for your health and for your social interactions, it changes the data. You're altering reality right now. You're seeing the patterns that your unconscious has been told are important and deleting the stuff that's not been important. This is real-time creation of reality and you're already doing it wow so okay so here here we are we're we're trying to have uh a, 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 the most successful life that we can have and we start seeing these things we get people calling us and we were just thinking i was just thinking about you or or so we get these confirmations are we able to use those and say okay this is good confirmation this is bad confirmation um this is telling me i'm on a good path this is telling me i'm on a bad path well the thing is your job is the executive function that part up on the frontal lobes is you get to decide what to do with the information this information you're perceiving, this meaning, is all generated by you. You're doing it. This is deeper parts of yourself, other parts of your unconscious, your spiritual self, processes that our brain is doing, and giving the information to you to make the decision on. So it's your choice on what to validate, what to accept, and what to act on. You know, And if you have a good relationship with yourself, you can actually hold a conversation you know, with your unconscious, with those supportive parts of yourself through 
synchronistic events. But ultimately, what they mean and what you know you choose to act on is your choice. You let yourself, you are the one that chooses your direction in life, and you're the one that chooses which of these meaningful events you want to pursue or not. Wow. Uh, this is so, so profound. Um, okay. Uh, so it is, because it, 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 it seems like it's connected, at least the way we've, I've thought about it in the past, or people have talked about it, is, is if you meditate or, you know, this religion or that religion, but it has nothing to do with religion or spirituality or, or meditation or anything like that, Right. Well, there are meditations that can help you, you know, clear your mind or focus on a pattern that you're looking for. But no, it doesn't matter what you believe. You know, it, this is an automatic process. This is something that we've always been doing. This is why our ancestors were, our shamans were dressing up in stag costumes and doing, you know, fertility dances because they noticed that there was a connection between what we feel and think internally and what happens in the environment around us. They were trying to exploit the synchronistic ability. And, and exploit in, um, in, in what sense can we exploit it now? I know you've, you've talked about that, but I'm kind of... Okay, Here, here's a simple version. Okay. Um, lots of people go to therapy and go to workshops to work on what's preventing me from getting what I want, Right. Good one. Okay. Well, what you're doing is, by thinking about what's preventing you from doing it, that's what you're producing in the mirror. You're seeing the very thing you're trying to avoid. So as a simple principle, if you want to produce patterns in your environment that help you move in the direction in your life that you choose, you look for those opportunities. You look for what you want, not what you don't want, not what you're afraid of. You look for the patterns that you actually want to find. Now, the two things that happen is your unconscious, your supercomputer, starts looking for those patterns and all the data that's coming in and the reality it's generating for you. And to some degree, you're moving in probability and the environment presents you with more of what you're actually looking for. Mm, So I'm thinking of a friend of mine who makes music. And he's been making a certain type of music for a long time. He's also been saying that the world is not ready for my music and kept showing me examples of how the world was not ready for his music. And at the time that he started saying this, there was no such, there was no other music like his out there. It's interesting that he still says the world is not ready for my music, but in the years that he's been saying that, other people that make similar music to his have his have their music out there. So they might have been saying, from what I'm gathering, uh, the world is ready for my music and been, been finding the synchronicity where that came true for them. Well, exactly. Like one of the examples is, is this book on synchronicity itself. This has been the easiest book to get published in the history of mankind. I didn't have to write a query letter for this thing. <laughs> you know, it's like everything fell into place perfectly and effortlessly. For, you know, because, you know, I wasn't looking for why it can't be done. I was looking for what do I need to make it happen. Ah, uh, wow. So, so way back at the beginning of the show when I was talking about Mark Skelton and producing his film, uh, and now he's telling me about the synchronistic uh, events that are happening because uh, uh, it, it, now I know it has to be because his thought process is, how am I going to produce this film? Exactly. How am I going to get it done? Wow. As opposed to, this is hard, or I can't do this, or this exactly. will never happen. Okay. Exactly. So is... Um, just in, in closing here, is there, uh, I haven't gotten this far in the book yet, is there self-talk, is there, um, uh, you know, affirmations, or, or how, how do we align the best with this? Well, there's, a, there's a, an exercise chapter that has uh, seven exercises that show you how to produce them and how to basically play with your environment like it's a toy, you know, and shows you um, how to keep it reasonable, how to keep it rational, and, uh, you know, how to not take your own myth too seriously and how to make this an act of play and creativity. So my advice would be 
The book gives people the general background on the phenomenon. It gives them a grounded, safe perspective on it. And then, you know, it shows them how to start playing with it if they so choose to. Is that uh, the pra- uh, the practical magic? Yes, it is. Okay, I didn't jump ahead. That's chapter 14, and I, I just might have to jump ahead and read that. And actually, um, I've got uh, our, our producer, Mark Leisure, jumping on uh, wanting to ask a question. So, uh, Mark. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to, this may be a tangential question, which leads us to uh, to another show at some point, but what I'm hearing and, and what I'm agreeing with seems to be very conscious and logistic, like a logistics engine in terms of, of how you're describing this process. My question is, it seems, and I'm, I'm asking for validation from you, it seems that we are leaving out a very large aspect of what's happening on the other side of the coin in terms of what we're creating in the subconscious and how that affects the synchronicity. Mm. That is, you know, that is a brilliant and appropriate insight. What's being projected in the mirror is all of your processes, mm. not just what you're thinking consciously, but all, everything that's running in that supercomputer at once. So, you know, for instance, it's not all good. If someone has been traumatized or molested or had, you know, unwanted experiences in other parts of their life, and they haven't been able to, you know, integrate that, you're going to get those projections in the environment. It's been well known by therapists that clients come in with synchronistic events that mirror both traumatic and peak sort of spiritual experiences. The phenomenon seems to be driven largely by the energy of your emotions. And, you know, it doesn't have any preference for conscious, unconscious, or transpersonal. It's a full spectrum reflection. Wow, that's awesome. And, you know, it's interesting because Mark actually used the words, I'm looking for validation, and I laughed inside myself. I thought, well, of course he's going to get it because he just created that (laughs) synchronistically. (laughs) And he got it from you. Um, thank you for, for sharing that. Are there any last words of wisdom that you want to make sure that, that, uh, you bring across on this interview, uh, as we tell people to go and get the book and, and, uh, uh, at, and learn about it at synchronicity, at how synchronicity works.com. Dr. Kirby, any final thoughts? Yeah. Um, I wrote the book because I ran into people that were confused by these events and needed sort of a ra- a grounded, network of ideas that help them understand them and help them find them useful. Okay, the book is written not only to explain them, but it's written to help people be active co-creators with this in a reasonable in a reasonable way. And you can just have a tremendous amount of fun with this and gain tremendous insights. Well, what a coincidence. It seems like you've written the book for me. Uh, because I was confused bef- at the beginning of this interview, but I, it actually makes a lot more sense now, and I, I look forward uh, to re- continue reading the book to get even more sense out of it. So this has been a pleasure, and uh, not surprisingly. So uh, thank you, Dr. Kirby Surprise. And when we come back, we'll uh, have uh, our producer's wrap, this time with not only our producer, Mark Leisure, but our guest producer, Lee Waterworth, right after this. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O.
back and uh, this is this is a really special producers wrap here because we've got Mark Leisure and uh, Lee Waterworth. Uh, Lee Waterworth is a producer in his own right, working on all kinds of fun things. And gosh, guys, uh, you know, Mark, you had some great questions. And Lee, you were trying to mouth some great ones to me. What, what was on your mind? I was just trying to get my head around it. Yeah, I, I know. Kevin was a fantastic guest, and I loved synchronicity. And, and, and this is what I guess I got from it. And um, it would be good to, to hear if you guys think that that's, that's right. I think people need to have a clear vision of what they want. I think they need to have a made-up mind. I think the universe honors that. I think then th- that leads to you having confidence and belief in yourself and actually the, the art of doing, getting stuff done, which leads to synchronicity. That's kind of my takeaway of the whole thing because obviously I'm trying to get a lot done right now and I want to make sure that it happens and I believe that it can happen and my vision is firm. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of look at this as to, okay, how can, how can I create a lot of synchronistic environments or synchronistic happenings for myself and what does the universe honor a made up mind? Is that right? I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah. I, I think, you know what, take what you said and I think you drill down just a little bit further and realize that the art of doing is everything. Right. So therefore those thoughts looking in the mirror and, and, and you know, the, the, the negative thoughts that I can't do or, or, or the worry about enough money, right? Those you are doing. You are doing exactly what you don't want to be doing, but uh-huh. you are, from the universe's perspective, you are doing. So when you're spending time with those thoughts, that's what the universe is getting rather than having other thoughts that would be empowering the exact thing that you're looking for. And you know, and actually I, I, you, you're mentioning the universe and, and I was thinking how he's putting it back onto us and our brain saying, well, if, if the, if the, the universe has all these possibilities, what is it that we're focused on? It's not necessarily what the universe is giving to us. It could be universe is giving A, B, C, D, E. It's that we just keep seeing Bs. Well, then you come back to the Sims work and, and a lot of what we're learning in, in right. quantum mechanics and realizing that we are the universe, that we are a universe within unto ourself, right? So yeah. that you are the creation that you project. So it's, it goes right back to what he's saying, in essence, right? That, that those thoughts that you're putting out there, you know, you know we're, you're now... What you're doing is removing the separation between you and said universe. You are the universe, so you're putting it out. You're getting it back in from yourself. Yeah, Lee. So that's so that's so that's fascinating in itself because when you think of it, when you think of it, if you can if you can educate people um, about this and you get enough people changing their thoughts and the processes that go on in the minds, then we could really have some. We could really affect some great change on this planet, and we could we could create a a world where everybody could truly thrive. <laughs> I suppose I should say, <laughs> since you're going to interject it anyway, I had forgotten to mention that Lee Walterworth is a producer of the movie Thrive. That's really not why I was saying it. I truly believe that we, that's what we can do. But it is important to say, and actually, well, there, there you go. Is it synchronicity that you uh, who have these thoughts in alignment with this movie that's being produced that that you come along and you co-produce a movie with your ex- very similar thoughts. Right, and, and, and you know what's interesting in that? It's because half of the topics in, Fra- in Thrive I was so interested in for so long. So, uh, and then the uh, opportunity presented itself and I was already quite educated about the, um, about the situation and mm. right, secret, synchronicity. I, I would say it's even more than that. Is we're, we're looking at synchronicity as, as if it's a, the, something that's over here. When you start to realize, and the more you become awake and the more you pay attention, you start to realize that it's all synchronicity, which is what he was saying, mm-hmm. right? The more you, you, you buy the yellow car, you see yellow cars all over. But the more you start paying attention to those things, when you start paying attention to the little things in your life, you see synchronicity in everything. When you start listening to the background music that's playing, when you walk into a certain place and it might have been something you were just talking about to somebody on the phone who knew you know, and there's this whole chain of events that we are typically not paying attention to until you recognize it and when you're taught to pay attention to it the more you do the more you validate that the creation of that synchronicity that is in essence reality that blows my mind. It does. <laughs> it really does. It's kind of like we're high or something because it always blows my mind. <laughs> He's the doobie dude. <laughs> doobie doobie dude. <laughs> 
Frank Sinatra reference. Actually, we have singers in the house. Lee Waterworth is also a singer, and Mark's a singer. What a coincidence! Ah, don't stop. It's on the acapella routine. It'll, you'll, 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 you'll turn off half your views, No, but if, if you know, actually, that's a really good point. Is is that we're all we all think we're really different from each other, but in so many ways we're really similar, mm. and we keep agreeing with each other's points. Mm. But didn't we find each other because? we are thinking this way? Yeah, we're, but we're all thinking the same thing and we all want to do the same things and we all want to affect the same change. So I imagine on a global scale um, how many people are out there and how many people are kind of like changing their thought processes every day and how these how people can come together and, and, and work together to, 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 to make this happen. Well, and you take that and you, 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 know, you replicate it, you look at that, at, Synchronicity, in essence, then is resonance, and you know it's like when you meet somebody that you, you, you have resonance with, that you vibrate with, that feels the vibe, right? That feels right. <clears throat> it's the same thing when you do that within a small group. You have synchronicity, you have resonance, and you're sharing that vibration. So, so now expand that to the greater populace, and and we hear of it. This is the thing that I I, I don't get is that people don't pay attention to things that happen and we kind of write it off it's just like we do the coincidence of I can't believe you called I was just thinking about you we write off the meditation group that got together and, and you know empowered the rockets to go off course and what all these things mm. we hear about these events and go wow that's amazing mm. and then what do we do we go back into our cave and our daily life and eat the pizza drink the beer and wake up the next day well, rather than saying if that can happen then what about this and start putting it to practice, which is what you're talking about, which would help us all thrive. And it's what Kirby was saying, is, is that it, we're doing it all the time. It's just that where do we choose to, to focus? You know, when I was talking about we all think the same kind of thing, I remember a, a saying that my father used to say all the time was, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, so now all of a sudden that has a whole new meaning, because... Obviously, if I attract or I focus on the kind of people that think like me, then you just look at my friends and you see what I'm thinking, which is how you could use it for, you know, kind of self-adjusting. Because like Mark said, when he asked that question to, to Kirby about like, what about my subconscious mind? Well, if you want to know what your subconscious mind is, look, is thinking, look at your friends. Because their issues are probably your issues. Look at your friends, look at your relationships, look at your work environment, look at, at, at all of those aspects. You know, birds of a feather. Birds of a feather. Are you going to sing again? <laughs> Is that a song? No, I was thinking bird brains and how my friends think, and I was trying to, but that doesn't work exactly. So, you know, actually, I'm, I'm actually really proud to be both your friends, and I like you both so much which means to tell me I like me. Right. I'm pretty cool. I think you are. <laughs> no, but well, not yeah, to give yeah. you an overinflated ego or anything. <laughs> but that's a very important point that you bring up because people that are in discord with themselves, that are carrying around anger with themselves, mm-hmm. typically have relationships that they have conflict with. Mm-hmm. Right, you see the people that are totally centered and totally happy, and they just go through life. I have, uh, I have a, a good friend that lives in San Diego, and I'll, I'll to protect his innocence, I, I'll, I won't share his name, but it's one of the positive, most positive guys I've I've known, uh, and every he never has a problem with relationships around him, and those that come and go always seem to be friends with him, and then those two will go and I'll, and they'll fight, but they'll come and and everybody everything mm. around his universe is always in perfect order. And mm-hmm. so it's that beacon, it's that resonance. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's birds of a feather synchronized together. Should, should be. <laughs> oh, that's great. I like that. And that, that, that just leads me to think about, imagine if you could get a lot of people focusing on the same thing at the same time, then what difference could you make? Well, I was just going to say, I think the three of us, and maybe with our producer Dorothy and with Sonia and a couple other of our friends, we should get together and read Chapter 14 together Practical magic, in which uh, Kirby Surprise tells us how we we magically, deliciously create uh, our world. I imagine yeah. I haven't gotten there yet, but yeah. Well, you know, I it, I was I was listening to something in uh, David Wilcox's book the other day. Uh, what's it called? Source field, source field investigations. Uh-huh. And um, he, he I, something in one of the early chapters, he was saying when people people come together and put their minds together, you overcome odds of billions to one. Wow. 
And that wasn't a lot of people. So imagine if you do get a lot of people. Well, yeah, there's a lot of science. Uh, there's been calibration studies. If you follow Hawkins' work and, and, and a lot of the quantum the field uh, uh, studies that are being done are now validating the difference between, between positive and resonant uh, information, thoughts or things, as opposed to destructive and discordant information. And certainly there's... I, I, I would assume the, the, that there's an algorithmic exponential a jump on on that creative positive force, which would you know is part of what keeps us thriving and keeps us growing and keeps us around, as opposed to blowing each other you know up immediately and, and uh, you know having by having that negative force around. You you, you guys should uh, you guys should interview Ray Kurzweil or Kurtzweil or whatever his name is, oh, the transcendent yeah. man. Good. Because if you, you put something like that to him, I guarantee you he's going to have an answer. Well, you know, interestingly enough... A I, singular I, answer? Well, who knows? <laughs> well, you know what? what you, did there. you just mentioned it there. We're all aligned, and I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll manifest that um, or not manifest that. That's what, you know, I'm trying to get into this, this way of thinking because I've been thinking uh, differently for a while. And now I'm kind of looking at what uh, Kirby Surprise is saying because it's like, well, that world which we're talking about already exists um, in a bigger way maybe than we know, but we're not connected to it. So is it magical or is it that it already exists? We're, we're aligning more and more with it. Or it's co-creation. We've got to create it. Well, obviously, if we're aligning with it, then we become part of it, and then mm -hmm. it, then there are more of people in that world. Maybe I. Well, this was this was part of what I was trying to inspire for the thought, and what I'd like to love to to maybe have him back on at some point and talk about. Because when I when I start talking about the subconscious, yes, there, with the logistics engine, what I was sensing and what he was talking about, I think I'm, I'm, my assumption would be it only scratches the surface because I do believe that there is. Layout and and things happen on on all of these other on the the many levels beyond this that are creating a, a blueprint that we are in real time reorganizing in order to then <clears throat> put a new subset of vibrations out there which are, we're now then uh, on the conscious level in our waking state reacting to right and then con furthering that continuation and both of these it's like this dance conscious and subconscious as we're going back and forth learning reacting responding and and aligning right so we're kind mm -hmm. of coming back and forth which is then mapped against this creative desire that we have this passion this whatever is inside us that is driving us against what we're living in in our day to day of what I was told to do or what I was told not to do mm -hmm. or where I felt embarrassed and stopped what I should have been doing or whatever the case may be Mm. Wow, you know the, 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 this this parallel universe and the multi dimensions, like like Kirby was mentioning. Uh, I, I just had a thought. Y you all know where where I live, and I live in a nice neighborhood. But to the right of where I live, um, in that neighborhood, to the right is even nicer than the neighborhood I live in. And then to the right of that goes up a hill, which is like one of the nicest neighborhoods in the world and then but to the left of my neighborhood is is not as nice a neighborhood as mine and then to the left of that people are shooting each other and it's like all of us exist at the same time i go to the store that's in my neighborhood or and they go to the stores in their neighborhood and they say that the world is awful you can't even go to the store on the left and on the right they're saying oh don't we just love these stores that we get to see our friends Mm. This goes back to you being your universe, right? And like they say, there is no on or off or hot or cold. It's all variations on one resonant scale. Mm. Good so point. going up and up and down your street, you're getting a variety of vibration. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. And yet, I continue to see what I see in my neighborhood. And my question is, if I chose to say I see what the people on the right see. Will I live that experience? But, but then I think the key is you actually have to believe, believe it. and do it. And it has to be in your subconscious. Right. Well, and then to continue to put that vibration out there, I would say every time you take a walk, keep one phrase in mind. To the right. To the, to the right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no left. It's just right, 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 right. Just okay. always right. Let's put an occasional left. Otherwise, you know, you'll, keep, you'll go in a circle, which is uh, another life's... Uh, Analogy. Like my grandfather used to say, go right, young man. <laughs> uh, all right.
<laughs> anyway, so so with that, this has been an absolute pleasure to uh, have this producer's wrap with uh, Mark Lejour and with Lee Waterworth. Welcome and uh, thank you for being a part of it. And of course, to have had this interview with uh, Dr. Kirby Surprise, who's written the book Synchronicity. And to learn more about him, you can go to HowSynchronicityWorks.com. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and together with Mark Lejour and Dorothy Lee Donahue, we thank you for being part of our synchronistic vision of the world for the good of what we think is for the good of all. Uh, what can I say? But ciao for now. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ironways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now's the time.